All right, it should be live now. Just checking. It's working okay. Let me know if you can see me and hear me. The countdown timer was successful at least. Okay, so let me go through the video while I'm waiting for people to catch up. So we've got a, uh, I think it's about a 12, 15 minute video from uh, the Serpa who sent in a 5NL cash game on Party Poker. Uh, let me just go through those hands with you. I think I've made it as big as possible, so let me know if you can see the bet size is okay. So we might have missed a hand or two, or it looks like the small blind was folded, because uh, with 502 ups, that's about 100 bigs. It's a new microphone as well, so hope, hopefully you can hear that okay. Alright. So straight off, the, the raise size we're using is a little bit bigger than I usually would use in the cutoff. Uh, I usually 3x from middle position. Um, usually you do mm, 0.25 here or so, but it's it's really small. So if you know these guys in the blinds are weak, it's fine. So this is really interesting flop because we wanna we want a bit of protection. Uh, we also have a decent draw, even though there's a flush draw there and it's against two opponents. Uh, so I would go for a bet here usually. Against one opponent, uh, I might go for a check, inducing them to bet the turn, but that's unlikely for them to bet as a bluff when there's other people involved in the pot. So let's see what he did. Yeah, I do think betting's, betting's better, probably about half pot or so. Yeah, that's fine. You can get value from flush draws here. So his stream was a bit late today. Um, it didn't look like it was going live, but the videos were saving. So hopefully it's okay now. So he took down that one, that's good. Uh, nine six on the button, sort of borderline hand. You can go for a raise there. That's when having the software is quite useful to see if they're going to fold too much in the blinds. Seems pretty standard so far. Probably going to play this hand. This is where I'd open to 3x as well, this position. Okay, so I think I may have mentioned in the last video I like raising about to 5x here. Uh, it really helps isolate. If you make it 3x or something, it's just not really enough. Awesome. Okay, so a bit of an awkward stack size to get all the money in, but let's do our best. So I'd like to start some really big bets here. Three quarter spots, like it's good. Two thirds, three quarters. Excellent. And again, so if this play is limped. Uh, under the gun, it's usually things like pocket pairs and weak suited aces. Uh, probably the the best hand he's gonna have here is something like ten jack of diamonds, uh, who peeled the flop and will call a bet on the turn now. Ten jack of clubs, but they wouldn't call this turn bet. 
see what happens. So yeah, about pound ten or so sounds good. Ninety nine, yeah. It's it's awkward because you're not going to be able to get it all in on the river with these bet sizes. I mean, we should definitely be shoving the river, though, uh, even though it's an overbet. But betting as big as possible on the flop and the turn just makes it so much easier. So, yeah, I would go for a shove here. If they're going to call 240, they're going to call off their stack. Or our stack. So we only got about a pound more. <coughs> or a dollar more. It's nearly the same now. Okay, so you see that they called that instantly. Uh, so that player probably did just have a suited ace. And they're not going to fold for the extra dollar, especially when they snap call like that. So when, when the bet on the river is going to be... Uh, almost an all-in bet, just go for the shove. It will get called pretty much the same frequency unless you're up against one of those players who doesn't like to lose their stack in one pot and wouldn't mind playing with like one buck behind and that would like freak them out. Uh, that's the only time it would make a difference but there's no way in there in that. Uh, this King Nines borderline? I think it's okay to open. Uh, it's really on the cusp. You can go for it. Ah, uh, so yeah, he's making a 2.5x here now. So maybe he just forgot to type that in on the first hand. <coughs> uh, when we're bet into on these boards, or when we're donked into usually, I like raising the flop, especially with two overs, as a bluff and then betting the turn. So if the opponent is pretty uh, short stacked, it makes it difficult to do this. So you can't really make that move and fold. Is Folding is probably a better option. But if we can raise the flop and then bet the turn and there's no commitment issue, I think it's much better play. Or the best play you can make with this hand in this situation. Two overs against the donk. Especially from a still position. This raise is way too big. So this is a sort of raise where if they call it, <laughs> you're starting to look at commitment issues on the turn. And also the idea is that you'd raise them so that they continue with a weak range and then you bet the turn trying to scare them off as they may assume you're going to make a big river bet as well. Uh, when you make it this big and you bet the turn, you're going to run into a very sh much stronger range of hands. So it won't it won't work as well. Raising to something like thirty five, be like perfect forty, and then just betting on the turn, like two thirds pot. Still not 100% this has gone live, so let me know if you can. If, uh, if I'm not sure if it's gone live, then I can just play on party afterwards. Oh yeah, and he made it 3.5 here as well, which I like under the gun, because we're opening a stronger range here. Interestingly, in live games, I think it's a mistake to open bigger from the earlier positions. So you might see some players make it uh, 5x or 6x, same like a 1-2 game, uh, people be opening 12 or 10 under the gun, uh, because they're opening their stronger hands, or they, they should be opening their stronger hands. Uh, it doesn't really matter, because you're still going to it's not going to really affect the calling of the other players. So when you make it uh, 10 or 12 and you get like four callers, which is pretty normal, three or four callers, uh, you're not going to be bluffing into the pot as often. So you're actually kind of wasting money. 
Um, what's better to do is just usually make it quite small, even 3x I think is fine, uh, or 2.5. I've started making it 5 in early positions too, just because I know it's going to get 3 or 4 callers, and unless I hit the flop, then it's going to be like, I have to give up on the hand. I'm not going to go crazy when I flop ace high in a 4-way pot, no draw and things like that. So when you make it something like 10, let's say, and get 5 callers, the pot's £50. And then you can you can get the money in easily, but when you make it like five or six pound, the pot's going to be twenty five to thirty pound. And if you're playing a hundred big blind stack, you can still get all the money in. It doesn't make any difference because you're going to be betting big on the flop, betting big on the turn, and then shipping the river. So you do have enough money behind. It just saves you money for when you miss. It's different in online poker because. It's going to be three ways usually, sorry, uh, heads up pots usually, or three ways, or it's just going to be a steal. So it doesn't make as much of a difference. This is going to be a standard bet here, half pot or so. Uh, one thing I would say is when you're betting with your value hands and betting as a bluff, tr I know how like half pot and two thirds or half pot and three quarters uh, correlates with those, but don't make the half pot so obvious. So I think I've set mine at like 50, 56% or so, 57%. And then the value betting one is going to be usually set to around 67%. So when you bet exactly half pot, people do see it as a little bit weaker. Uh, they may think your 57% bet is your usual C bet when you have a value hand, because it looks like a, it can look a bit like two thirds pot to them if they're not really paying attention. But betting 17 into a 34 pot just might get them to call more often. And that's exactly what you don't want when you're bluffing. I like that race size on the button 2 and 5 and up. Right, definitely going to play this hand. It's good to keep the race size consistent. But again, if we did have the, uh, the software where you could see the player's stats, if you know they're not really paying attention uh, based on their, how much money they're putting into the pot and how many hands they're playing, uh, you can make it free exit. And although it only makes a tiny difference to the percentage of the pot, if they're not paying attention over like a thousand hands, it makes a huge difference. want to see yeah big bet here 25 at least to 30 we can get a lot of value from pocket pairs between fours and kings and if we bet bigger then it allows us to get more money in before like a jack hits and then kills their action on pocket sevens or something like that Okay, so I would be putting this player in when they're opening the cutoff here. So I would make it a bit like in that Ace King video. Uh, I'd be making it a third of their stack and then shipping every flop. I know it's only Ace Ten and Eight, and it's not Ace King, but when the person's this short stacked and they're opening from that position, it's essentially Ace King against their range. So you can make the same move. 
I, yeah, I think a flat hit would be a mistake unless there's some really weak players here in the blinds that you want to keep in. But they'd have to be super weak to uh, <laughs> to try and entice them into the pot rather than just putting this guy in here. Uh, so it looks like we're not getting away from this hand. So I would... I think I would call, hope a spade doesn't hit, and then let him bluff again. We're definitely not folding. And I think he's he's not going to really have a draw in hand. He's either got an ace or he's not. So he's just going to be... Uh, he's just going to be betting and betting again. By raising, we just shut out his bluffs immediately. I would raise here on the turn. Because if he does have a draw, you want to get that in before it misses on the river. And there's quite a few draws out there now. And he could be calling us off with gut shots here pretty easy too. Yeah, I like that. Alright, he, he had ace-king, but I mean, he could just as easily have ace-six to ace-nine there rather than ace-jack to ace-king. Whenever I see someone send me a video and they have 2-3 or 7-2, I always think they might do something crazy. This is one of the weakest hands I'd open from this position. I'd go down to 8-9 suited, jack-9 suited, maybe 7-8 suited too. We really want to isolate the big blind. If he's playing a stack like that, he's probably a weak player. And with this bet size and their stack size, we can get all the money in if we want to. If we flop good. This is a raise on the bun, if it comes around to us. Uh, this hand, I I wouldn't open it every time, but just because this guy in a small blind is here, I think we should open the king-queen. But yeah, usually it is fold. I, I would open it from middle position, but not under the gun in six max. It's just because when people are calling you with all of the ASX combos, there's about 120 of them, I believe, and if they're calling with all the like raggy aces and stuff, they're beating you. Open small on the button and he's 4x from the big blind. I do think 
this is a cool it's pretty close i would prefer it to be suited uh he has made it really big though so i think it is quite close definitely if he makes it 40 or the normal size definitely cool with ace jack on the button when you're being free bet by the big blind but yeah it's close i wouldn't mind a call Definitely cool ace jack suited there, obviously, and ace ten suited. Ace queen's definitely cool as well, so that's why it's so poor the line. Aces again. I'm not getting much action, action on our aces today. Alright, so I think he's going to do something crazy here. Because he got that. <laughs> Very disciplined. This is an open. Oh, I thought you are going to fold there. Alright, so we have bottom pair. Okay, so what I like to do in this spot is check back and if they bet raise the turn i only make this move against uh steel positions versus blinds when we're in position i wouldn't make it if we were under the gun and like the button called oh sorry the one of the blinds called in that situation but the, because we have such weak ranges they're both going to be missing a lot so we can just uh get him to fold better hands that way I'd be interested to see what he does here, because I, yeah, I think I would go for a small raise and then a bet on the turn here, which is what we usually do to a donk. Donks when they lead out like that. It doesn't have to be a big raise, I'll go for like 50 I reckon. Again, it's quite big. So if they call, it puts them on a stronger range again. And I don't like checking back the turn if we've raised the flop. So I think we do have to bet this, but it looks pretty spewy now because the pot's quite big and we have a pair of twos. He's going for it. That is such a big bet. Got it. So... Yeah, that just shows that when, when they're donking, it's usually weakness. So the opponent definitely didn't have a jack there, for example. Uh, probably had something like threes to sixes, threes to sevens sort of hand. So if we do that play where we say the flop goes check, check, and then they bet and we raise, it gives them a chance to fold those pairs that are slightly better than ours. Uh, and also when they donk, we raise and then we bet the turn, we also show a lot more strength and can get them to fold. Alright, cool. So, thank you for that video. Uh, so you were in it last week, I believe. Unless it was Hero Gora. <laughs> so I don't I think you have implemented the opening race sizes and maybe just forgot that first one because all the others were perfect. And if you weren't doing that thing where you raise the dog bets on the flop and bet the turn, then you can see how effective it is in just this video alone. So thank you very much for that. Uh, so as I was saying, just got back from LA and Vegas and Capri I was away for about 23 days I believe Got a lot of air miles um, there was no poker in Capri that's just a random island off Italy that was a normal holiday with the sun and stuff uh, although it was very sunny in LA and Vegas uh, we went to this casino uh, me and my friend stayed in an Airbnb uh, near commerce was about 15 20 minute walk uh it was so hot though when you're walking down there and the action there is crazy uh they have smaller games but the game we were playing was 5-5 the blinds are 
yeah, it's a bit weird having the blinds that are the same. And they had this really weird rule where if someone has limped and then it everyone folds the small blind and big blind, they just chop it. They don't even play a pot. Uh, as soon as they do play a pot, the dealer takes $5 from the pot. So it's it'll be, <laughs> I understand why they do it because then they'll be playing a £10 pot when they've all put five in. But I don't know why they rake it that way rather than on a sort of percentage basis, but it looks like they do just take a fiver from the pot or maybe $4, but it's loads and it's, it's not worth it unless you raise a uh, big pre-flop will get a lot of callers in those positions. Also, they really hate playing shorthanded in America. Sure. Way. So this is one I taped. Uh, probably going to get taken down soon. But basically, my friend here, he's got aces. Uh, the all-in is two five. So it's five players who've gone all in. Everyone's pretty much playing 100 big blinds at this point. Uh, so ace is raised pre-flop. Uh, ace, queen, flats. Um, seven, deuce, flats. Pocket fours, flat. And then the big blind ships all in. But I don't know what the big blind had. Uh, the big blind shipped in about 250. Then ace is flatted and then ace queen reships for 500 uh seven deuce calls and then uh pocket fours cool as well which is like he's getting <laughs> i understand why he did it because he's going to hit a set 20 percent of the time but he also has to dodge all of the other sets and pairs that people can have so yeah i think he just wanted to win a massive pot there but he was the last one to act with those fours um, so yeah, this is the, uh, what happened? You can see people literally just playing racks because they're just shoving the money in. It's really hard to see the board, but it is six, uh, sorry, nine, eight, six, five, two. And there's four diamonds on the board. Uh, the aces did not have the ace of diamonds. In fact, no one had a diamond. So, this guy here, he's the one who's got seven days of clubs. Each in a turn it over. It was crazy. It was so crazy. Like. <laughs> Alright, so I, I think there is a problem with the... I have a feeling it isn't going out live, because... I can't see it on my monitor. So what I'll do is let me, because I think this, the video will save anyway, let me just play uh, on Party Poker for now then, let's do that. Also, if you haven't logged in today, I should have left mine on there for a bit of a sweat, but you might have got an email today saying about the uh, promotions for the live events at Dust Till Dawn. So you just go to uh, rewards, I believe it is. Yeah, promotions. And I've already used it, but on here, and this will pop up when you log in, it basically gives you a, a card and then you literally just click it and you reveal your prize. So I think I got a satellite ticket, but you can win like straight, straight away. You can win all these prizes here. So it's a 275 Dustle Dawn ticket, a 55 Dustle Dawn satellite, 11 satellite and a 220 satellite. I mean, obviously there's going to be more of these ones, but you could literally just go in your account, click it and get this one today. So definitely have a look. So that's the Dustle Dawn up in Nottingham. But there's loads of promotions running, and the new cashback thing, make sure you opt in for that every week. Just to make sure you uh, make the most of it, because it's like free money. Alright, so let me play... Something like... It's 133 there. 
This is really weird, so again, the average pot size is pretty similar. Like, even if you're playing 1025, it's only $2 compared to 72. So what I'd usually do is just play like loads of tables of 25, usually four of those. Uh, it'd be pretty difficult to show that on a stream, so let me just do for one at the moment. Play for about 15 or so. Yeah, I do get the feeling the chat is blocked, so I apologise that I haven't been responding if it is blocked. I've got this weird spinny thing on it that I've never seen before. Okay, so we've flipped a gut shot here, so I like a check back and a raise on the turn and I've got an open ender. Uh, I will not be bluffing the river unless there's a four straight on the board but I believe if that happens then I've actually got it so <laughs> it wouldn't actually be a bluff in that time. Uh, I'm playing without the stats today as well. like flying blind. Oh, I love zoom so much. Just so quick. I've been experimenting with raising 2.5x when it's small blind versus big blinds and everyone's folded. I usually would have gone for the 3.5x just to get them to fold, but it I feel like you're going to get called a lot more anyway, so you can make it 2.5x, get a really cheap steal when they don't want to play, and you can play some poker after the flop. I think people do just play too, too weak in those positions. Yeah, so I've got mine set at 57% for my uh, flop bet, if I'm usually missing, and I think my value bet's 70 And those will alternate based on stack sizes, but trust me, no one's paying attention at these stakes anyway. Apart from me, just me. And if you do want to send in a, a video, I'll put the details up in... Hmm, probably shouldn't put it in a chat if it's not working. Uh, I'll put my Instagram up at the end so you guys can see where to send it to. I like that symbol. That's the Ouroboros symbol, isn't it? The snake eating itself. The symbol of everlasting something or infinity. I think it was the original sign for infinity before that the 8 came up in very old times. If I was on the button, I'd probably squeeze that hand. But we're going to get peeled a lot from the blinds. I free bet quite tight from the blinds when I'm squeezing. Or even just normal free bet. King Queen suited is definitely good enough to open in these, un in these games. probably be playing this hand. So we're gonna get this in against this player if they want to get it in.
take a fold, that's fine too. Change my image a little bit from last time. Pretty much the same idea. It is still some sort of dice. Jack three is my favorite hand. But only when it's double suited. That's the best. Hands are so much better when they're suited because they just got that extra trip hitting potential. Nah, the extra um, bluffing potential because you'll like turn the straight draw or you turn the flush draw so often, uh, well reasonably often, and it just gives you that confidence to give the extra barrel in. Because that jack's going to scare him off quite a lot if he's got an underpair. I've got to the point where we're never folding, so I think uh, if he has clubs here, I mean the value hands he can have here is 9 jack and 4s, we want to get it in before a club comes, uh, if he's got a 9-2, so we're going to ship it in here. Good luck us. Ah, we got very lucky there. <laughs> That would have been a massive cooler. Well, it was for one of us. Online poker. It's fine, guys. It's fine. We were both licking our lips at that last one. Just like, yep, yeah, easy money. as well. So we have our gut shot and we're out of position. Let's go for a bet here. And then again this gives us the we can hit the gut shot or we can bet if we have a diamond. If we hit an ace we're gonna bet. Actually no because we have that straight draw there isn't really anything bad that can come on the river and it'll just let him bet if he's got nothing now. If we didn't have that 6, I think it's better to bet here. It's quite a big bet. And then we hit straight on the river. So I think it's better to check now, as it looks like we... Ah. Oh. Yeah, I mean if he's bluffing there, he can have another barrel at it. We block an ace, so it's unlikely he has that anyway. I don't think it's going to have a set or anything too strong, so he's not going to like hero call us on that board. Alright, we will be getting this one in too, if he'd be obliged. so nice if that guy put it in. That's cool. Uh, we can definitely get this in against the squeeze. Let me just think of the size in. So he's got two. Uh, he's not gonna fall. 165. Okay. 
on 60, put them to the test. When we make it 160 with hands like that, it still, if he really wants to, it still allows him to make a bluff, because we were quite deep there, if he wants to just put the rest in. Also, there's a point that we may still be bluffing, so he might want to just uh, give himself one last shot at winning. Optional to make this raise, but I think we're just going to give it to him. Yeah. Those are the sorts of hands that are good to fall bed bluff with. Tease us a bit, you can't just put in 140 man. Gotta make us think that, you know, we might be winning or something. At least give us the illusion, dance with us a bit. So we're gonna go for two bets here. Four's a decent card actually. Get value from some other jacks and they might make some sort of crying call with eights and nines. I think some people start free betting tens there at this limit. It's like they look down, it's tens, I have to free bet. Not recommended, by the way. today.
Yeah, so I... Again, I do get the feeling that this isn't going out live. I can't see the video, so I'm a bit worried it hasn't, but uh, when I tried going on at half nine, it did actually save the video. So the video should save for viewing later if it's not live. see some familiar faces in this. That guy called Blood River. That's actually a variant of poker where you keep dealing the river until it's a red card. So if the river's like a spade or a, I call this a little suited, a spade or a club, then there's another betting round and another river. And if it's a spade or a club again, you just keep going. More of a home game sort of variant. Uh, I'm giving up on this part. Unless a club comes and then I'm gonna bet. I have noticed that when you open in a still position and get called in the blinds, they do bet the turn a lot. The only danger of experimenting with this is that you get free bet a bit more. So I'm not sure if they're just seeing that and they're just thinking that's weak so I'm going to raise it. It's good to try new things though. I'm not sure which strategy is better at the moment in small v, small v big. If you're against the type of opponent who you know is going to call, it's better to make it small in my opinion. If you're against someone who's inclined to fold, then uh, also make it small, but by making it 3x, you might entice them to just fold everything, where they may call a few more hands if you do that. So when you make it 4x like this, uh, it's quite an expensive steal, but I think they, it does generate more folds. Also, I've been experimenting with not turning on the auto rebuy button and then just clicking it when I get down to like 50 bigs. It's getting erased a lot from the blinds. Ah, right, I make this my last round. Someone's opening from that position. I don't think any of our free bets have been called today. Okay, so yeah, if you do, if you do have Instagram, uh, a lot of people put a lot of poker content on there. But yeah, just type in Joe Craig Poker. Uh, add me or just send me a message and then I can go through it. Um, yeah, so keep a lot of content on there, where I've been, what's going on. Uh, and blog, you can get to my blog website there as well. So, yeah, again.